What's up everyone? Today I will be reviewing the E3D Nano 3D printer. I received this printer from Gearbest. A little disclaimer is I, I received this printer six months ago, ago and I did an unboxing on this printer and then I moved uh, a few states over and I lost that footage. So I don't have that unboxing video anymore. But I have it printing right now because I also want to show how quiet it is. And I'm able to talk and you might be able to hear it retracting, retracting and extruding. But that's about all the noise you hear. It's actually a decently quiet printer. And that's another feature that I like about it. Now there are pros and cons to this printer. But as you can see, if you can print a Benchy, a 3D Benchy this well, you can print parts that you can actually use. Such as, you know, this, this is for a uh, GoPro session. And I can print this in PLA and it will work just fine. And this is in TPU though. But you can print parts for your quadcopters. You can print parts, any parts that you need, or you can print you know little cool figures like this steamboat right here and it does work all right so here it is on a uh, gear best right here um, the e3d nano educational household 3d printer and going down let's go ahead and look at it so it has kind of an awkward uh, build space so for the first 70 millimeters it is 110 millimeters by 90 millimeters and then if you want to go higher an additional 45 millimeters then you have to reduce the x and y from 90 to 80. Uh, that's just because of this this square right here and all that kind of stuff so let's go ahead and look at this uh, more of the specs so 210 degrees is the max temperature I tried to go higher and it can go about 212 but then it's going back and forth from 212 or uh, sorry 215 I tried 215 and it was going back and forth to 212 to 215 and just kept going back and forth uh, I found the print speed is 30 millimeters per second is the best speed. All right, so here is everything that it came with. And again, uh, I lost my unboxing video, but this is the stuff that it, or the accessories that it comes with. A screwdriver, a scraper, and all the other accessories that you need to get started. All right, so here are all the programs that come onto that micro SD card. And it comes with the software, uh, a couple videos on how to operate it, and manuals. Uh, the it comes with a couple like sample prints too. And so what I did was just create a new new folder, and I put all this stuff in a new folder just like that. And then I put the STL file right on the outside of here stick it in and then hit the play button and it does everything for me which is a nice feature for this printer all right let's go ahead and talk about how we feed uh, the filament through so basically what you're gonna do and yeah I have a little stick in here right now holding the the spool because I lost this piece and I'm gonna reprint another one but basically to fill up the filament or uh, feed the filament there's a switch back here on the left it says feed and on the right it says retract now when I flip it to feed this light is gonna start blinking so with this light blinking now it's blinking slow so now it's ready to receive the filament and you just stick it through the top right here and it's gonna start to uh, feed through all right, I see filament coming out of the nozzle. So now I can flip it around and just turn it to the center part and that's gonna stop feeding it. And if I wanna retract it, I put it all the way to the right and I'll, it automatically retracts it and then I can just pull it out. 
This printer comes with its own software uh, version of Kira and it's already set up for you for this printer. The speeds are set up for this printer which all you have to do is basically grab the micro SD card it comes with, put your file on that SD card, make sure there's no other files on it, and then no other STL files. Then stick the SD card into here. And then all you have to do is then hit the print button. Right now it's blinking slowly, it's warmed up. Now this printer does a weird thing when it actually calibrates where it is, where it's at in space. It only has one limit switch and the limit switch is down here in this corner. So right now it's pushing itself and you can hear it skipping steps right now because it can't go anymore but it's just counting the steps all the way and I think it's like 110 steps it's counting. And so it's just bumping in against this. And since there's no limit switch to say, hey, you're here already. Um, so it just, it's, I thought that was kind of odd to do, but they, they do have one limit switch down here for the Z axis, but no limit switches for the X and Y. So now it's gonna go down to this limit switch. It does a double tap. And so right now it's doing the raft and then it's gonna print the print. Easy as that. So that's how easy it is to print with this printer. I have set this up with Simplify 3D. It is, this is this, it's using that slicer right now to print this model. Uh, Kira is a little easier because it's already set up. Um, and then TPU, it's printing TPU just fine as well. Alright, so that brings me to the conclusion of this video and my recommendations are for those who are looking to maybe start 3D printing, maybe aren't too tech savvy, but want to get into 3D printing uh, maybe educational use. I would recommend it to anyone who wants to bring it into classroom. Uh, beginners, for sure, because it's cheap and it gets you the know-how or the starting knowledge on how to print and how printers work and all that kind of stuff. And it's also easy to use and comes with everything and it's ready to print about 10 minutes after you unpack it. I, yeah, that's why I would recommend it to beginners. For the experienced users, I almost recommend you save your money and maybe buy a Creality or a TiVo Tornado or some other kind of brand printer. Uh, just because you'll have more volume space um, and you'll have opportunities to print ABS and PETG. But for those who are just starting out, this is a good price printer. Um, Filament's actually pretty cheap nowadays. I find my filaments last me quite a while and I print a lot, so that's, that's kind of nice. But one thing I do have to say about this printer, it's hard to find a, a printer that are, printers that are cheap that can print TPU pretty well. And you can see this, this printer does decent on pre TPU. Now, I have this piece too. It does have issues on any pieces that are retractable. So you can kind of see that it's a little messy on this piece. I reprinted it, reprinted that same piece on the TiVo Tornado and it turned out a lot more cleaner. And with TPU, it's kind of hard to get rid of all these little hairs that are coming out and all that kind of stuff but you can get rid of them with like a heat gun pretty easy but this one just is this kind of blobs all over and it looks like it skipped right here so it does have hard time with pieces like this where it has to retract and 
So it retracts and then extrudes, retracts and then extrude. Um, and that actually could be something that I could fine tune it a little better and maybe make it better. Um, but yeah, but with this piece though, it just, it turned out really well. I can use this piece and for a GoPro session. And so that's what really impressed me with this printer it was I was able to just to load TPU and print. And it doesn't say that you can do that. So I know like with the Creality, Creality CR10, I don't know if they fixed it yet, but you would have to print a, a part and put it on your uh, extruder stepper motor and then you're able to print TPU or you get a, a different extruder uh, module for your stepper motor. But, uh, but yeah, this one, this one's completely stock, cheap, and can print TPU and PLA. Uh, I didn't have any problems with the factory leveling, and I found that was nice. I never leveled this bed, and it's it does decent on the the bed leveling. Uh, and I mean PLA it does pretty well on these like little parts. You could tell that it's if I brought in a comparison with a more expensive printer it's that you could tell that there's a quality difference so the quality on this printer I mean if I had to give it five out of five stars it'd probably be uh, maybe two and a half to three stars uh, out of five because I've seen worse but I've seen a lot better just even with the the Creality and the TiVo or pretty high quality printers um, but you're paying an extra $250 to $300 for those printers so I'm able to tell what this is this is a steamboat that's and everything like that all in all this this is a nice portable printer I mean I could just pick it up and take it anywhere I want the power supply is your regular 12 volt 6 amp power supply like that would be on like a laptop or something like that and all in all I, th I think this is a, a decent printer for the price now if you're just getting into 3d printing yes this is and you just want to like kind of like test the waters this is a good printer to test the waters on if you're more experienced I would recommend something like the along the lines of the Creality, the the TiVo series printers. That's about all I have to say about this printer. Um, if you guys want to see more information on this printer, uh, I'll leave a link down below. Also, leave a link for all these uh, models that I've used down below. As always, thank you guys for watching and thank you guys for your support. And I hope you stay tuned.